Hi, hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Live Interview Series. Today with, with us, we have the very pretty Miss Noor, who is a director and co-founder of Laundry on the Go. Here at this fire lab, we aspire to inspire your startup journey and also present you the necessary knowledge for you to use on your journey. Topics include firing, firing and sorry, hiring and firing co-founders, uh, pivoting, renaming your own startup, and also all the hardships that come when you start a startup. Ms. Noodle here will be sharing about disrupting an industry. If you don't know what what does it mean to disrupt, or also you would like to learn how to disrupt an industry, or even someone else, how to disrupt your best friend, learn from her. Okay, Ms. Noodle. Hi, Kevin. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this weekend. I know it's a okay. Raya weekend, and you have to. She's traveling up to <laughs> start this morning. Thanks a lot for sharing your time with us. No problem. Uh, My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Noodle, could you share something about your background, like your previous experiences or even your education? Okay, um, so my background, um, I was, um, I, I studied in uh, International Islamic University, uh -huh. Malaysia. Uh, I studied local, I -I -I yes. uh, in Gomba. Uh -huh. uh, I took uh, Manufacturing Engineering, uh, ah. and I have a degree in Manufacturing Engineering. That's why you did something <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, but then um, it's not really related to what I do. What I do after that, because okay. uh, when I started to get a job, uh -huh. I, I couldn't. Um, I didn't manage to be an engineer. Uh, what did unfortunately. you do then? Uh, so I uh, I joined an event management company, huh? and I've been work. I I worked there for about eight years. Okay. okay for about eight years. Um, and I've gained a lot of experience in how to manage events and I've been into like um, marketing and did, stuff. Did you regret not doing engineering? Um, at first yes, but then when I, when I started to work in events, right, I uh -huh. thought at, that that was supposed to be my um, temporary job. Okay. But then uh, after time and time I started to work, I do events by events, I start to you have like a passion it. in okay. it. Uh, so, um, it's okay for me to stay for eight years, but then um, everyone. I think more people know that events is not easy. It's easy right. job. Uh, uh -huh. You have to like put all your time and effort into your work. Mm -hmm. It's like married to your work. Married to your job. <laughs> married to your but job. then you get it. Your co-founder. How is that yeah, happen? Yeah, that is why I, I started <laughs> to like divorce the. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So after I got married, I, uh -huh. I, I, I have to, to shift the priorities. Okay. To reduce your commitment with yeah. the events company. Yeah, and then I start to find a way on how do I make money after I quit my job. Because I I, I, I studied engineering, yes. I work in event, now I don't want to do event anymore. So, uh, so what do you think of <laughs> like, maybe dropshipping? Yeah, <laughs> so, so that's why when the idea of having my own business okay. uh, come about. Lah. So did you start like a small, a different idea? Uh, it started uh, at first um, because I, I wasn't uh, from a business background. Okay. Right? I wasn't from a business background and I don't have any families that... Um, are businessmen. Business, yeah. okay. So uh, when we started, we are like, okay, uh, we have some saving. Um, this one can be, maybe can be our uh, our in initial capital to start uh -huh. a business. So, that's um, dangerous, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's dangerous, that's dangerous. I'm really like gambling into it. Uh -huh. So uh, when when I started, um, I I I have the idea of solving a problem which uh -huh. I always face it during uh, when I was in events, which is laundry. How is yes. events and laundry even tied up? Yeah, it's tied up because I don't have time to do my own laundry. No <laughs> laundry. I thought it was like the yeah. tablecloth. No, 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 no. no. I, I don't that. have time for the my own laundry. <laughs> yeah, that's another issue. Okay. Uh, so uh, my own laundry because uh, we work very happy hours and uh, sometimes we, we sometimes we sleep at our office. We don't go uh -huh. back home and stuff like that. And mm. at the weekend we are busy with the event. So um, I have problem to send laundry because. Uh, when I go to work, the laundry shop is still closed. Right, you when go I, too early in the morning. Yeah, too early in the morning. And then when I come, come back from home, when I have time to go and send it, the laundry shop is already closed. Now you can hire a PA, can you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so, so um, I, I see that's a problem that uh -huh. maybe I can try to offer some solution okay. to it. Uh -huh. So uh, that's when we start laundry on the go um, as a collection service for collection. the laundry. So, yeah. but but this time you, you didn't have a job right now, so you're free to run a try out this business. Yeah, uh, uh, I 
I didn't quit straight away. Uh, okay. I actually started my business for about uh, six months. Then uh-huh. only I resigned. Okay. Yeah, so so uh, how did you manage your job and as well as the collection center? Yeah. So so uh, when we start first, right? We start offline. We start offline where we have a kiosk, yeah. uh, collection point, uh, in LRT station. So which was your first? Looking at all the uh, LRT stations, uh-huh. right? We always like Kelani Jaya because at that that's time, the last point. Yeah, that's the last point, and everybody like so like. Uh, everybody like go to Splendid and every every morning there's uh-huh. a pool. Yes. Uh, the car park always full, so we know that oh, we have a market, even the food there. shops around Splendid really do well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we we try to go to Splendid uh-huh. We we uh, uh, we call uh, we get in touch to Prasar- Prasarana. We submit a proposal. They like the idea because there's uh, no LRT collection points yet at Splendid uh-huh. uh, Laundry collection so, points. Uh, yeah, uh, laundry collection. Uh-huh. So. Uh, they approve the idea. We open a, a, a shop there, uh-huh. um, but we have to hire staff lah at that Definitely, time. Yeah. So uh, with our initial uh, initial uh, office, uh, capital, capital, we have to rent. That, that's like your life savings, right? Yeah, that's like uh, I like. Okay, it's okay. I, uh-huh. At that time, we are like validating the ideas uh-huh. and want to see if it's gonna work or not. That's uh-huh. why I don't stay away to keep my job. Okay. So okay. after like about six months, uh-huh. uh, and um, at that time we see that um, this can work or cannot work. So we start to to go for online basis. Looking to expand. Uh, to expand to online uh-huh. rather than. This was how many years online. ago actually? Like four or five years? Not so. Not so Three long. Years. Uh, we opened the kiosk in June 2015. June 2015. And then we start online uh, January 2016. Ah, six months. Yeah, Sorry. six months after uh, that. So you found something lacking in the stores. Yeah. Uh, That's why you went online. Yeah, because um, having a store, having a physical shop, uh-huh. you need a lot, to, uh, need to invest a lot on the Yeah, venture. you even just your overheads, rent, yeah, overhead, your worker. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so, it, so there's also like tax for your premises also, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So, so there's many things that we need to look into, uh-huh. uh, and then that's that's when uh, we start to think of maybe we can try to go uh, to pivot a bit, okay. to go online, uh-huh. and then uh, we we still actually maintain the kiosk until uh, last year November, uh, uh, October. So it was still there till last October. Yes, because we have to. Um, because we have like one year contract. Oh, you sign a contract. contract. Yeah, so we have to if, still. If you were to break the contract, what would have happened? Um, because at, at that time, uh, one one thing to we we don't think of about break, uh, breaking the contract. Uh-huh. We at that time actually have some hope uh-huh. that we can convert that kiosk uh-huh. into a different business model, which is uh-huh. a laundry system. So you drop your laundry yes. and someone picks it up. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so throughout the. Uh, the period, period that we we propose to present uh-huh. okay can we convert this kiosk to become the uh, locker system uh-huh. and all that uh, at the end they said they are not ready for that uh, wow. because of they considering some like maybe security issues and stuff so possible said, okay it's okay then maybe because if this cannot go to this uh, to the locker system then mm-hmm. we have to let go the kiosk lah. <laughs> mm. there, was there like a yeah. sad sad point for you like yeah because uh, we we actually uh, got some funds to do that, so uh-huh. then we have to pivot and change. So your yeah, investors actually don't mind for you to. Uh, yeah, uh, actually that one we got under grant. Okay. Got under grant. Uh, so uh, the grant actually. So you got credit, right? Uh, we got super. Treasure. Super. Okay, yeah. treasure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So so that that's when we have to actually like uh like give back uh, the business model and change it to just focus on online. Yeah. So online meaning how do you operate these things? Okay, so online basically we do pick up and delivery. Mm-hmm. Pick up and delivery all on online. Uh, so you use the basis. app or website okay. kind of thing? Okay, when we started in uh, January, right? Uh, uh-huh. At that time we got um, some fun lah. Uh, mm. Very small amount of fun uh, for pre seed round. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, that investor uh, actually uh, invest for us to, to create like an uh, MVP app. Okay, MVP minimal app. viable yeah. product. And okay. minimal viable product. Uh, uh-huh. So uh, if if you all go to um, I, uh, to Apple Store or, okay. or you, know, you can Google Logi on the go, that is the app, uh, our MVP app. It's still available if people want to download oh, and okay, want to have okay. it. So, uh, but that is very basic. It's just for people to place their booking, uh-huh. put their time, location, and uh, day, mm-hmm. and uh, for the the pickup and delivery. Uh, so, 
that is when we started. The the idea of having the NDC is actually to 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 get the feedback from customers. Oh, right. They want to download the app. Okay. And how is the behavior? Okay. Yeah, because uh, we need to find out uh, how how uh, how often our customers do the laundry uh-huh. and when they download the app, whether they keep the app in the phone or things like that. So after few months of validation, then. Got some so you collected data, do they use your app, do they yeah. delete it because it's taking too much space on their phone? Yes, correct. Uh, are they actually like put into the like what your pickup card and then not continue with it? Yeah, so, so basically uh, that MVP we don't have uh-huh. like uh, any uh, other features, it's just like booking features. Just only booking. Only, only booking. So meaning you have other features now? Now we have other features. After uh-huh. we have done the validation, uh-huh. we have understand the customer behavior. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, the new one, the new app, uh, people don't have to download anymore. We go on web app also. Web app, so you yeah, type app. in the website for the website. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so, uh, it's easier, right? It's easier and people don't have app. to download it. Yeah. yeah there's some problems, especially with app patch, right? Yeah. Because Downloading an app is quite hard actually. <laughs> people don't get it. <laughs> and it takes too much of your space. Yes, uh, and then and then uh, because our customers, most of them are experts. Uh-huh. Yes. So they have issues when their numbers is not registered in Malaysia. So they uh-huh. have to add and they have to like... International speak. numbers. Yes, so there are some problems that we have to uh, like go through. Uh, okay. And then we think like, okay, we go with that and uh-huh. it's not everybody's problem. <laughs> Okay, okay. Mm. Speaking about solving problems, you okay. you were talking about disrupting an industry. Okay. Why do you choose that topic? Did you actually disrupt an industry, or um, can you explain more? Okay, um, I think disruptive is very like uh, trending nowadays. Uh, people like talking about disruptive, uh, disruptive startups. Uh-huh. So to me, um, yeah, people do call laundry on the go as like disrupting uh, startup to laundry. To the, laundry to the laundry industry. Uh-huh. But then, uh, what uh, my opinion of how we become disruptive is not to to kill the industry or to oppress the. <laughs> the it's more on to add value. Add value. Add value. And okay. then, uh, because if if people look at the laundry industry, right, it's a very old industry. Yes. From hundred years back. As far as this. As, I think as soon as they started wearing clothes, they started washing their clothes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we don't know how many hundred or thousand years back uh-huh. they have started right. to open So um, They pakai cawat. <laughs> yeah, most of the time they go to the river. Right. Again, uh. Maybe while bathing they do it together. <laughs> so so uh, the idea of disruptive is more to add value. Because okay. nowadays we see um, uh, like in, in uh, logging industries, yeah. uh-huh. people uh-huh. start with the conventional laundry service uh-huh. and then people have go to um, the self-service laundry and stuff. Okay. So what's next? Uh-huh. So what's next? So when, uh, when I uh, do some research, actually, uh, this stuff is also sometimes people relate it to innovation. Uh, this innovation, like yeah. like a product or service? Yeah, but, but to us, mm. we actually don't actually innovate the business idea okay. because it has started actually in overseas. Okay. Yeah, so you took an overseas idea and brought it over to yeah, Malaysia. So, so we try to take the, the idea from there but we localize it mm-hmm. to match the market in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. So like where what other industries have you seen in Malaysia let's say that there's something called disruptive services? Or? Yeah, actually there's a lot now. Like I mean like uh, especially in services in like Grab. Yeah, Uber. Grab in taxi industry definitely yes, everybody. They are know. the number one Grab. Yeah, Uber and Grab and uh. then uh, in groceries, everybody know like fresh bread, uh, uh, the, like the, the, the uh, groceries uh-huh. uh, delivery and then the food delivery industry. Yeah, so like food panda and so many of them. Yeah, right? so, uh, so that is one. one I, I also think like places like Lazada and all that, they also disruptive like the people. Uh, yeah, the a whole retail, physical store, the retail, or retail industry. industry yes, yeah. correct. So now this Why are anyone complaining about them? <laughs> No, no, nobody complains about them. Right? <laughs> right? They're like the good guys. <laughs> so I think, no, I think uh, it's uh, on on how to be disruptive, right? Uh-huh. It's actually to to meet the current trend of people okay. behaving. So, uh-huh. um, like nowadays, if we want to maintain the old the old uh, fashion uh-huh. ways of doing business, uh-huh. we will be like left behind because people right. now are like more advanced. And everybody people are too busy. Too, uh, yeah, too busy. And uh, we, uh, disruptive is more on how helping we those people match uh, yes. the industry, the, the business model uh-huh. uh, to the current lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's not like uh, a bad thing to disrupt a 
Not disgusting. a bad thing. To me, it's not a bad thing. You're complimenting their services, right? You're <laughs> yeah. not killing them off. Yes, like like for us, uh, uh-huh. we don't uh, disturb. Uh, why I say we don't disturb industry? We are bringing uh, more value because uh-huh. we actually um, helping uh, the customer at one end uh-huh. and also helping the laundry providers at the exactly. other end. Because on our side, we don't own any laundry shop. Uh, okay. So you're actually bringing in more customers to the laundry shop. Yes, yes. Yeah, you're helping them out. They should be here coming to us. Yeah, that's <laughs> how we actually. Okay. <laughs> so, so because uh, most of laundry shops, so we go and meet them and talk yeah. to them. I said, and we ask, uh, what are the problems that they face with mm-hmm. the customers? Because when they are, uh, when they have a shop, uh-huh. uh, a station location. Okay. Uh, That's the only place the they can pro- be. Yeah, so the, the customers will be just around right. the area. Uh-huh. So they don't know how uh, for them to market. Uh, and and probably it's like a one person business, yeah. one or two and then like they'll be washing, cleaning and they don't have time to expand and yes. do marketing. Yes, correct. Like. And, and they also like uh, not very uh, good in customer service right. and stuff like that. And then when... Uh, but they're professional cleaners. They're professional cleaners. <laughs> professional cleaners. I, I, I have no doubt about it. So yeah. You let them do their job, yes. you bring in people for them. Correct. So, uh-huh. so that's what we do. We uh-huh. go and market the, the service uh-huh. and we get the customers and we share it with them. How important do you think is to disrupt in this days? Disrupt a way a uh, product is sold or service is presented? How important is this disruptive technology? Uh, I think it's quite important because um, uh, when we talk disruptive as an innovation, right? Uh-huh. Uh, nowadays, people move very fast. Okay. People move very fast. And uh, when people have like an idea, people will straight away implement it. Uh-huh. And straight away to validate the idea whether it works or not. Mm-hmm. And then uh, whether if it works, they launch it. If yes. not, they will try to another idea. Yes. So if we, if we have something um, uh, disruptive, usually to bring to, to, to how to say it? Huh? Because um, people nowadays are very comfortable with, with a very old fashioned business style. Right. Because then it's, it's for, for, the, the, for laundry the, industry, right? Uh-huh. For example, when we want to start this business, it's not easy, especially when we want to, to introduce this business as premium. Okay. Because what we give is convenient. Okay, convenience. So, convenience. So, uh-huh. so people now are not only looking at us as uh, uh, laundry or uh-huh. cleaners, uh-huh. they're also looking at us as convenient provider. Okay, you're yeah, making so, a person's life easier. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, to, to disrupt an industry, mm-hmm. uh, you have to have a very good strategy uh, when you start. Okay. You don't go and just disrupt any industry like thinking you're a hero from... Well, that's how you <laughs> die fast, guys. <laughs> yeah, so so it, it sounds like very heroic action like uh-huh. to disrupt, but then you, you need a very good strategy because... Uh, but all this you, you learn as you go, right? Yeah, you don't know anything when you start, basically. Correct, correct. That's why for a business, right, to sustain, yeah. if, uh, if you just start a business for like three months, six months, uh-huh. you cannot already say that it's already successful mm-hmm. you have to wait a longer like period a longer period uh-huh. it's still there is still uh, a, a, a traditional method of how you measure the, the right. success of the traction the traction and yeah. stuff so uh, talking about disrupting an industry is good because nowadays uh, people always try to look for something new okay. and people always like uh, very, uh, something like um, like a challenge okay. yeah what can give uh, them uh, more uh, experience like, like a or traditional belief and yeah, way of life yeah, but but normally these, these people who use your services they're called like early adapters right yeah the percentage is very small right beginning like yeah, they're yeah, willing yeah, to try yeah. the, the ones who are willing to explore something yeah how do you convert the other people like, for me i'm like it's okay i have my own washing machine i'm going to do it myself like oh like some people still go and deliver their clothes mm-hmm. to the laundry okay so yeah, it's not easy to educate people actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do receive calls asking, hey, where, where's your outlet? Okay. And then we have to no outlet. Oh, actually, we don't have outlet. We, we don't get our customers to walk in. We uh-huh. go and pick up from you. Uh-huh. So every time uh, people come, we still have to explain to them. Right. But then uh, as time goes by, uh, that's why uh, I think uh, the marketing is very important. Uh-huh. Uh, you have to know uh, mm. your target market. Mm-hmm. And uh, nowadays, we have a very uh, good platform to do marketing, Facebook, uh, uh-huh. Google, uh, uh-huh. and stuff. So 
utilize this platform mm-hmm. uh, try to optimize it to get the message delivered to the customers because nowadays uh, if you compare to like maybe last three four years mm-hmm. it's easier for people to adapt now because okay. they already used to all these people all these grocery delivery and food delivery so it's easier now for them yeah. to adapt but when we started yeah uh, we do face uh, some difficulty on getting uh, Uh, customers to use our service, but yeah. it's lucky uh, because uh, we started having many expats to use because they are okay. already used to the, from their own countries. From their own countries. countries, yeah. See, I heard like uh, I watched a YouTube video. Uh-huh. This guy was telling like the five top reasons startups fail. Okay. Number one was timing. Timing. <laughs> so they were in the wrong time and the wrong field in the wrong country, possibly. Correct, correct. So but if people will adapt, it might take time. So you have to persevere through the. Yes. Maybe the initial one or two years. Yeah, correct. So now we are almost reaching the two years of our service. So, mm-hmm. so how is it like? So far, um, it's very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we keep on receiving new customers. Uh, uh-huh. we, people started to get uh, like more interest in this kind of business, uh-huh. uh, and then uh, we have uh, received more like people start to uh, want to collaborate with us. Like meaning like laundry shops laundry shops and then you also tie up with logistic partners right yeah, yeah. they are happy with you yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, when we uh, when we first started we mm-hmm. have our own in house uh, driver yes because we uh-huh. want to test the market and okay. stuff uh, so uh, after a while uh, mm-hmm. we see that the demand is start going big okay. and then the, our drivers mm-hmm. are already Yes, yes. Yeah, so like three everyone. people, they can't do much, man. <laughs> yeah. So that is when we started to uh, to discuss whether to add more uh, drivers or to partner with uh-huh. logistic partners. Okay. So uh, after we do some costing and stuff, so mm-hmm. we think having a logistic partner is better and yeah. more scalable. Uh-huh. Uh, so, uh, so we have partnered with uh, right. a few logistic partners mm-hmm. for them to actually uh, help us to pick up and deliver the customers. So this. Delivery for logistic partners. They are also in a disruptive industry, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got a question. Like, you know, like, let's say cars. Let's okay. say Grab, Uber. Uh huh. Taxi drivers are not happy. Okay. KLIA airport drivers are not happy. Yeah. Okay. How long do you think this model can last when you're disrupting some? But you are not. You actually complementing their yeah, service. Yeah. That's that's the difference. So, so if you're killing someone's job, mm. do you think it'll last? Oh, definitely. It uh, will be a very tough time <laughs> because um, for me, lah, uh, when we when we do business, actually, uh, uh, we have a good intention, lah. Okay. So, uh, how how you want to be disruptive, uh-huh. you still have to think of um, the other people. Don't spoil someone don't spoil else's someone else's life, life. Lah. Definitely, <laughs> it will, Yeah, definitely, it will come back to you. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like, uh, we have seen like. Even like recently, Uber uh-huh. so we we don't know whether maybe they have uh-huh. they have like internet issue or something. But there was some harassment yeah, issues. So, yeah, so so uh, but but when when we study again the business model, mm-hmm. um, they are not like we 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 do it that they are not profitable and things like that and. We just yeah. go to a new country and raise more funds. Yeah, <laughs> but that is not uh, in terms of. Um, <laughs> That is more on the uh, the the investor giving uh, the money. Uh, for me, uh-huh. as a business, right, you uh-huh. have to be able to sustain your own business with uh-huh. the right. with the with customers. The environment, the customer, yes. the provider. Correct. So so that is uh, another thing. Maybe my my thinking is slightly uh, different than other people. <laughs> so still still a bit old fashioned on that. But on the other side, they also say adapt or die. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So if, if you can't fight them, you join them. Yeah, that's true. Like, like nowadays, <laughs> even taxi drivers are uh, starting to yes. actually on board uh, on the uh, platform. So, but Grab, actually Grab taxi, that's how they started. Right. Uh-huh. It's just the issue came when the Grab car. Yes. Like yeah, but but um, that's why uh, sometimes for those uh, okay, like let's say uh, this one person uh, mm-hmm. try to disrupt the industry, mm-hmm. and the in the industry people actually have to mm-hmm. look. Into what they are trying to do, actually. Yeah. Actually, they also can adapt. Yeah, they they uh, can adapt, and mm. they can also like look at maybe that's a reason why these people come. Yes, to what's my industry. fault? Yes. How? D- what am I doing wrong? Yes, and what yeah. or maybe what I don't uh, do enough or something yes. like that. So yes. actually, both parties can work together. 
it don't yeah. have to be a very bad That's scenario. why they call it a blue ocean strategy, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so it depends. Some uh-huh. people uh, prefer to play it safe. Uh-huh. Some people like, like really want to go like aggressively and, uh-huh. uh, and go and discover. Change the market. Yeah, so it, it depends on uh, p- uh, people's perspective. I <laughs> see. But e- eventually it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's, happening. it's either like, does it take one month or it takes one year? Yeah, yeah. And, and people now, so like the, the, the old fashion businesses uh-huh. have to start to, to, uh-huh. to know about this, to uh, start right. to adapt about it. Okay, we got a question here with, from Mr. Shari Baha. He's asking about how to initiate collaboration with new partners such as logistic partner. Hmm. You have to be trustable and reliable first. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, okay, definitely. We have to have our brand uh-huh. um, up front first. Yes. I mean, like people won't easily want to collaborate. Like who are you? Why should yeah. I collaborate with you? Right. So, so one thing, if you want to start to have collaboration, uh-huh. put your brand up front first. Okay. To push on your brand awareness, get people to know you, uh-huh. and have like some uh, traction. Have some already have some traction. Already have some traction and. Uh, the way I see it is like for a logistic partner, right? Mm-hmm. If you can say that I will definitely give you ten rides a day in this area yeah. with your income of let's say fifty ringgit. Mm-hmm. If you can provide those kind of information, yeah. they'll be willing to work. Yes, yes. So, so when we when we show them uh, what we do, uh-huh. we show them uh, our past. Uh, uh, your plan, data, oh, your data. data. Okay, uh-huh. this is what we get daily. Uh, and this is how we do. That's it. what they want to see. So, so that is how. That is why they actually agree to work with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they have provide them data. They have done their own calculation. Also, they uh-huh. still making profit out of it. So, yeah. so, Mr. Shari, are you happy with answers? <laughs> Please comment below. Any other questions? Uh, just type it down. We'll try to answer you within this time as possible. If not, we'll still answer you like. Are you okay to yeah. answer later okay, on? So we can like write it in the comments. Okay, if, if there's questions for Moon Nurul, I'll take on the questions, okay? Any, okay, uh, I think we are end, closing oh, our, okay. the end of our session. Alright. Is there anything you want to tell our viewers, like one thing for them to like take, take back points from this event, uh, from this session? Okay, um, to, especially for startups, uh-huh. yeah, for, for new startup founders, uh-huh. um, it's not easy to like, uh, when you start a business, it's not easy. So, if uh, you try it for a few months, uh-huh. uh, you have some challenges. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Any challenges. business. Any business. You yeah. can try, you can do whatever, yeah, but just hug don't your give pillow, up. don't cry. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> just, just don't Big give back up, up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Just, just don't give up and try. Uh-huh. Because uh, when we started also without any experience, so it's uh-huh. quite hard for us, but we try not to give up and have you until now? Never give up. Yeah. Looks like Mr. Shari is happy with your answer. <laughs> Thank you, Shari. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Every week we have a question for All our right. viewers. This is our third episode. And so far we have asked two questions already. There's a separate se- section with all the questions in our Facebook page. Okay. Uh, at the end of the eight week session, we will choose the guy with the most right answers so even if you have one answer you might be right might be might be winning the prize okay, okay for this week's question uh miss Nurul wants to ask a question okay. Are you? um so what you need to do is go to our website and uh-huh. check our blog mm-hmm. in the blog there's an article about dry cleaning dry cleaning yes that's one type of cleaning. service that they provide yeah so uh, uh get three points uh-huh. uh about um dry cleaning and uh-huh. send it to or comment in the picture that we'll share later three points about dry cleaning from their blog. Yes. If you steal it from Wikipedia, we'll know. <laughs> okay. And right. it, oh, yes. Slama Raya and Slama yeah. Raya, Miss Nurul. Thank you. And we have Miss Nurul's partner and life partner and co founder <laughs> here. Hi, Slama Raya as well. And drive safe, guys. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everyone else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And next episode, we're having Mr. Sean Koo from Grab Gas which changed their name to Hello Guest and he will be talking about his transformational journey from this previous company to the new one. Thank you and stay tuned next week. See you guys. Bye.